And over to the world of cryptocurrencies where Bitcoin jumped more than 10% during a surge in cryptocurrencies yesterday, regaining some ground lost during a weekend sell-off that was sparked by renewed signs of a Chinese crackdown on emerging sector. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets they tumbled last week after China tightened rules for crypto trading, leading to crash in prices of some of most popular cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin's volatility has been on a full display in recent days as Tesla CEO Elon Musk sparked a 20% sell-off in crypto market after EV companies stopped accepting it as a form of payment. In the scenario, what is the future for cryptocurrencies and can they be treated as a reliable investment option? To talk all that and much more, today we are joined by Sheila Varin from San Francisco. She is the World Economic Forum's Head of Data, Blockchain and Digital Assets and Deputy Head of Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution. Thanks for joining us, Sheila. First of all, what do you have to say on the recent volatility in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency prices? Yeah, well, it's certainly been a very bumpy ride the last couple of days. And, you know, I think the thing to remember is that this is going to remain a volatile asset. Uh, it's very hyper reactive to any sort of indicator of a possible regulation or, uh, you know, people uh, coming in or coming out and, and making claims about it here and there, whether those are founded or unfounded. Uh, and so, so it is it is a, a volatile asset. However, it's important to note that the trajectory is very positive. If you look at what's been happening since the beginning of the year, you know, we're up 300%. Um, the, the trend lines are really, really strong. And so I see this as just an inevitable, another blip in the history of cryptocurrencies and not one that, frankly, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about. Do you think China is doing it as it can be a threat to digital yuan? Well, reports say it has not excited Chinese much. So is it the being done by China so that it can be countered or the competition can be lessened? You know, I really couldn't speak to motivations, but it does seem quite likely that China, the PBOC, is looking to make the digital yuan the, the main unit of account or the primary unit of account, you know, in China. Um, and there is, I suppose, some consideration as to whether cryptocurrency might serve as a competitor for digital yuan. Now, my view is that those things are actually quite different, and the reasons you might want to use digital yuan are going to be very different from the reasons you might want to be engaged with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin specifically. So uh, I don't see Bitcoin as being a threat to the digital yuan in any sort of meaningful way. Uh, but again, the motivation of the regulators might be just to kind of close out some of the competition. Will the volatility impact its acceptance as far as the overall global acceptance is concerned? Certain firms are using it now, accepting it. Will it the volatility um, impact its acceptance also? Yeah, I think we're going to see more and more institutions accepting cryptocurrency as a form of payment. I think we're going to see more and more adding it into their you know, exchanges, accepting it and these kinds of things. Um, I have always believed from the very beginning that cryptocurrency in some form or another is here to stay. I think it's going to be it's I think it's part of a financial landscape. It will continue to make inroads in our financial landscape. But I also think that different kinds of cryptocurrency, digital currencies rather, pardon me, uh, are also going to remain parts, important players in the landscape. So I see a world in which you have central digital currencies like digital yuan, stable coin like you know, USDC, uh, and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or ETH or other things like that, that are all operating in the same environment and they are serving different needs. They're, you know, they're for different purposes, but they're all, uh, it's more of a fluid environment than I think this kind of winner takes all mentality, which is just not how I see things playing out. And is it a good investment option still, the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, despite the volatility we have seen recently? Well, I think some people would say they already are. I mean, it certainly depends on when you enter the market. You know, again, they're quite volatile. And so I suppose this, this latest round would be a significant crash if you entered the market very recently and you panicked and kind of exited. And the data actually shows that a lot of this was new entrants that kind of panicked and then sold very quickly and, and flipped very quickly. Um, I think people would argue it already is a pretty good investment in store of value. I think the question over what happens in the long term, you know, there's a lot that's happening in the space. It's a very dynamic, active space. And my view is that we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg of innovation that's going to come down the line. We're seeing there's just so much more that can be built on the back of this technology and these protocols. And as things get more efficient and faster, as you know, energy gets cheaper, as cost goes down, you're going to see more and more appetite for building on the back of this technology. And I think I, I couldn't even predict where it's going to go. I just don't think there's any possible way we could, we could know that at this point in time. But I don't think it's going anywhere. 
I think that this is just, again, there'll be more blips like this over the course of, you know, the next months and years. Uh, and this is kind of the nature of, of the deal. When you're building something that is this innovative and this new, the market doesn't really know how to value it. There's a lot that goes into, there's a lot of, you know, fear that comes into play. Markets get very emotional around these kinds of things. Um, and I don't see it like stabilizing in the way that you might, people might want, you know, um, for, for some time. And last question to you, there are concerns now arising around the environmental impact of Bitcoin because the mining takes a lot of electricity, so environmental concerns are around there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, this is definitely the controversy of the day. You know, I think for a while the criticism of Bitcoin primarily was, you know, criminal activity and it's funding nefarious actions, all this kind of thing. And now the focus really is on environmental concerns. There's no question Bitcoin mining uses lots of energy. Uh, that is a fact. Um, there's a lot of research that's come out recently that shows how it's actually, in some cases, potentially spurring markets for renewables. There is a tremendous amount of clean energy being used. It's not necessarily dirty energy, you know, uh, the uh, traditional kinds of energy sources. Um, and we actually have a, a work underway that's actually examining this and kind of saying this has been a concern of the communities for from the very beginning, understanding how energy intensive that this is. And there are different options, uh, you know, things being built that are going to help remedy that there's also just a lot of awareness in this space now one of the big counter criticisms is to say or, or counter arguments is to say well what are you comparing it to it's energy intensive compared to what i don't find that to be particularly productive you know kind of line of discourse because you can compare you know apples to zucchini all day long doesn't really tell you anything meaningful what i think is important to note is that you know the environmental concerns i i see them as being somewhat overstated um, from the standpoint of what the technology actually offers in terms of security. Uh, I also think that there are other options in cryptocurrencies, if that's something that is particularly concerning to you. But I also think, and this is where I'll land this point, that there's a lot of activity underway to remedy some of this energy intensiveness by making uh, the case and actually building different models that are going to show that this can actually spur activity in the clean energy space and provide mechanisms not only for uh, new energy sources to be deployed and used, but also for job creation around that as well. So that's something I'm, I'm paying attention to. I'm interested to see what some of the research being done in this space uh, provides. Well, thanks, Sheila, for joining us uh, from San Francisco on this important topic. That's an important thing. As far as Bitcoin's volatility is concerned, well, consumers are really wanting to see a lot of other information about it. We we'll keep on getting you all that. We on now available in your country. Download the app and get all the news on the move.